So, Brian, the um, the Tesla shareholder meeting uh, is always a big interest to Tesla fans, and I know you're an investor and a fan. Um, what did you think of it? Yeah, well, if you're seriously involved in Tesla and following it closely, there really wasn't all that much new information. Um, Musk gave a nice little presentation, but he tends to repeat himself, and he, he for the most part, kind of repeated things that uh, we, we already know. But there was a few little tidbits and so i'll just go over those quickly um he implied that the model y will start production in texas soon by the end of the year this is their new texas plant uh, factory that's not quite open yet and he said that they're making enough 4680 cells at the fremont factory these are the new form factor batteries 4680s that tesla has invented and they plan to make a zillion of them um he seemed to imply that they're making enough 4680s at Fremont in California, that they'll be shipping those to Texas to put into the Model Y, which implies that the Model Ys coming out of Texas will be the new structural battery pack with the new batteries. So um, that was exciting news. Um, they've talked before about having a kind of a backup plan of using the older cells, the 2170s, if the 4680s aren't ready. But I, the thing I got from that is that maybe they're going to use the 2170s at the Berlin factory, which is also about to open, and maybe 4680s in Texas. So none of this is fully confirmed, but that sounded like uh, what he was saying. And and if true, that's a, a fairly big deal. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, it sounds like Berlin's going to open up, uh, possibly spitting out a car this month. Is that? Do you really think that's going to happen? Uh, Berlin may be a bit a little later. I think they're November. waiting for some regulatory approvals. I think, you know, Berlin is always moving slightly faster. That sounds like maybe Texas is closer. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had the Berlin Gigafest a couple of days ago. So they had a big sort of country fair at the, uh, the factory in Berlin. So there's been some coverage of that online and they gave factory tours for everybody. And there's kind of like parts in the factory, like parts of the cars around the factory, but those apparently were made in China and shipped there just kind of as display, or maybe they're using them for testing and whatnot, uh, because they don't have approval yet to actually run the factory. So, right. um, the robots were all kind of moving around, but it was, you know, they weren't actually doing anything. It was just a nice kind of display. And apparently it took about two hours to do the factory tour. Like the factory is so enormous. Um, People would go in one door and come out the other uh, two hours later. Uh, but it all looked uh, fairly impressive. Uh, did you have a look? We, we sort of saw um, the structural battery pack, which is going to be used in the Cybertruck. That's a thing where they're reducing the number of parts and making it one big solid unit that the battery is part of the structure. So you're saving, you know, manufacturing and, and money and, and so forth. So what did you think of that? Anything? Yeah, there was some new images we had not seen before of the, yeah, the structural battery pack with the front die cast and the back die cast. I, the, the one they showed, I believe, is for the Model Y, but the structural battery pack is what they're definitely going to use uh, going forward. So seeing new images of that was um, a big deal. There was a little demonstration of their new precision LED headlights. I thought that was really cool. They had a car mm. set up projecting onto a wall. Mm -hmm. with the headlights. So the headlights now apparently can be programmed to write words on the wall. So <laughs> the headlights of this Tesla car were saying the words Tesla on the wall in different patterns and moving around and stuff. <laughs> I want to write custom um, messages. Like, hurry up well, when I'm I, waiting for my wife to come out of the house, you know? like Yeah. I'm assuming that that's what's going to happen. Uh, you know, we'll be able to, you can already do that with the horn. Like you can have custom sounds coming out of the horn. So uh, custom images coming out of the headlights. Um, I think that would be uh, super fun. But yeah, the Berlin uh, Gigafest, it looked uh, pretty interesting. And, and Tesla really doesn't have a huge presence in Europe right now. Um, you know, a little bit in the UK, a little bit around Europe. Uh, but there still aren't that many Tesla cars on the road because they've had to import them all. So, you know, the floodgates are, are going to open soon. And, uh, you know, Tesla's going to be huge, huge thing in Germany. I, I watched, uh, happened to watch Elon's speech um, just by chance. I wasn't planning on uh, spending the time. I made some notes, if you don't mind. I'll go through some yeah. of the things that stood out to me. Um, the Model Y is the, he anticipates being the best selling vehicle in the world, period, by 2024. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it was even sooner, isn't it? Maybe 20, 
Well, he he said that it'll be the best premium vehicle by 2023, and then the best vehicle period by the next the year after, or something like that. He thought maybe yeah. even by the end of next year. No, well, once they get the 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 Texas factory and the Berlin factory, the Model Y is their first priority. That's the first thing they're going to get going and ramp up. So, yeah, I believe that it's the Toyota Corolla is the top selling car right now, and they make something like 1.5 million of those a year. And uh, I, yeah, I absolutely think Tesla will uh, achieve that in a couple of years. Oh, there should be a, an electric Toyota Corolla, Brian. They made a hybrid one. Yeah. At least they should have been a plug-in hybrid one. Okay. So solar and energy sections of the company have were put on hold basically for two years while the Model 3 production ramped up to save the company because it's such a such an important thing to get. You know, it was a big deal. We we don't all, we, we didn't hear about it until afterwards, but that was a, a life and death situation getting that Model 3 production ramped up, right? That's why we was sleeping yeah. on the factory floor. So the solar aspect of the company is true. It's kind of lagging behind. They're still not really making any money off of it, but uh, that you know should change soon. It's too bad they, they didn't leave that a little bit more separate, I think. Anyway, moving to Austin, uh, the headquarters, but California is still expanding the workforce there. Uh, how do you feel about the moving to Austin? Well, you know, it doesn't really make a huge difference to me, but it um, it makes sense probably because their, their biggest factory is going to be in Austin and uh, yeah, they do want to make a, a political point to leave California. I don't particularly care one way or, or the other, but yeah, they're still expanding operations in California quite a bit. So it, it's really kind of a, a nothing story uh, ultimately. And I wanted to mention too, um, the Megapack battery facility. So this is one of the expansions in California. And this was a little bit of new information from Musk's speech, but uh, they have a new factory in California that's going to make the mega packs, which are the very large grid scale uh, battery packs. And they're planning to make 40 gigawatts a year at this new factory of mega packs. And that's up from, you know, they currently make a total of only four gigawatt hours of storage. And they're planning to, to multiply that for it by 10 times wow. at this new California factory. Uh, and that's a big deal. I'm not sure how long it's going to take them to get there. And he did say that the vehicles are the priority for battery cells. So all the battery cells go to vehicles first and then basically what's left over. Um, but, you know, they're ramping up battery production. Their suppliers are ramping up battery production. So this should all grow uh, fairly quickly. Now, he uh, was political, like he was kind of pissed off at California politically for shutting them down during COVID and things. And so I'm moving like a child. Yeah. Uh, my headquarters elsewhere but he didn't mention that this time this time he said that they were reaching the limits of their ability to attract talent to the bay area due to housing prices and it's just so clogged up there in the in the um, silicon valley area where tesla's at fremont and yeah i, I kind of buy that do you sort of it's it's definitely part of it but really just the fact that you know texas is the new factory so you know that's kind of where they want to be there was a nice article on clean technica this week about, um, I mean, you know, Texas is more business friendly from California. And that's mm -hmm. another thing that, of course, has been talked about a lot. California tends to have higher taxes and a few more restrictions and rules and everything. Uh, but there was a nice article on Clean Technica saying that there is actually states more business friendly than Texas. Um, so they didn't really have to go to Texas. There could have been there's, other places they could have chosen. There's states more women-friendly than Texas. I'll say that right now. Exactly. Texas is not, you know, if, if Tesla was run by women, they may not have ended up in, in Texas. But, um, you know, Austin is, it's got a lot of cachet right now. Austin is one of those hip cities in America right now. And that's where they're going. And that's you know, where it's going to be. The only thing I think about when all these companies do move there, when I say, well, why should you, given the political climate of what's, I mean, uh, it's, it's not like it's completely Republican or completely right wing or completely anti women. It's just that those people are in power locally, yeah, uh, and they make the decisions on everyone else's behalf and women's bodies' behalf. And um, but yeah, the more and more companies that move there, Brian, the more people who will vote against that crap. So yeah, the more chance there is to to change it as the power of Austin grows, it'll definitely shift more to the left because Austin is very much a left leaning city. Unless they try to gerrymander Austin right out of the state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Solar roof is slow. Sounds like uh, retrofitting is difficult, and uh, they prefer new builds. Uh, so that's been a hassle. It sounds like uh, they just you know hinted at that. 
Um, they want to get to the point where people will demand solar roofs when shopping for a new house, so with a battery. So they'll say, well, you know, this house that you're trying to sell me in this new subdivision, does it have a new solar roof? Does it have a solar roof with a battery or not? Or does uh, Harry's Building Company uh, is the one I'm going to go with? So they want people to be demanding. Now, just like you would demand cruise control on a car or, you know, some of the new safety features that they have now, like uh, pedestrian collision warning. And yeah, and they probably should have focused on new builds from the beginning because it is more difficult to retrofit the solar uh, solar roof tiles to older houses. So they should absolutely focus on new builds as much as possible. In Elon's estimation, electric vehicle, electrified transportation will double the demand for electricity. Um, I'm seeing different figures sometimes, but uh, that's in his estimation. And he thinks that home heating will add that much again. So three times, you know, a third for home heating and a third for electrified transportation. I think that's the case in Canada, probably. In in Canada, for sure, because the home heating is going to use so much. I think Tony Siba has maybe used the figure four times as much electricity. Um, he keeps saying it's not going to be a problem because solar, wind, and batteries are cheap and plentiful, and we can put up lots of extra ones. Uh, but, yeah, I've certainly seen it with my own house. My own electricity bills have gone up, you know, 20%, 30% since I got an electric car. And I would love to switch to electric heating, but, you know, that would definitely uh, double my, my usage for sure. But 20, 30% is like 20 or $30, isn't it? I mean. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's still, you know, cheaper than buying gasoline, especially at the current prices. It, it, but, it, it uh, bugs me. And I, I keep seeing this online and with people I talk to, how much does your electricity bill go up? You know, uh, you know. There, I was on a talk radio show once, and the, an elderly woman called in and said, I, how much is my my electricity bill going to go up? And I said, well, maybe 28 bucks is the average in Canada. She said, oh, no, I don't want that. And I, I said, but what if you save $150 a month? Well, I don't want my electricity bill to go up. Yeah. It's such stubborn, stupid thinking, and it's pervasive. The Clean Energy Show with Brian Stockton and James Whittingham.